Welcome back. I'm Stacey Delacat. We are listening to uh, remarks from several senators in the Joint Commerce and Judiciary Committee as they address Mark Zuckerberg, CEO and chairman of Facebook. In just a few minutes, we expect Mark Zuckerberg to testify himself and then take some questions from lawmakers. In the meantime, I'm joined in studio by trial attorney Eddie Hayes. Uh, we know what's at stake here. Facebook admits that they allowed the private information of some 87 million users to be improperly accessed by this uh, political consulting firm, Cambridge Analytica, which had ties to the Trump campaign. What we've heard several of the senators say in their opening remarks is that uh, Facebook knew about this, uh, you know, improper grab of data as far back as 2015. They only notified Facebook users when this came to light in the media in the last if month. They all knew in 2015 somebody is going to take really a lot of money from it, all right, first. Second of all, if the people, if there's any reasonable chance that somebody that was going to interfere in American politics was going to get their hands on this information, that's uh, terrible. I mean, we have this the second time. The Russians did it, now Cambridge Analytica, and they're not saints. I mean, this means that Trump apparently had two major forces fooling around to elect him president. Well, that doesn't... That doesn't make me comfortable. And the other thing is you don't know what they're going to do with it. You don't know if it's going to be able to affect our utilities, whether or not it's going to affect your credit cards. I had a guy, I have an enemy, okay? He hates me and I hate him. Uh, he hacked into all my credit cards, right? All of them. My bank debit cards, my American Express, PayPal, everything, right? I mean, you know, it's a problem, you know? and. People can do that. If you access, to, you have enough money and you have access to people that know how to do this, you can do it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Facebook was supposed to start notifying those 87 million people yesterday whether or not they were one of the ones impacted. Everyone was supposed to get a message. As far as I know, as of early this morning, a lot of people said they still hadn't, hadn't seen anything. But what we do know is just a few hours before um, this Senate hearing got underway, a, a class action lawsuit was brought against Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Uh, that is no surprise. I want to get your thoughts on that in a moment. But first, let's go back to Capitol Hill, where Mark Zuckerberg is now speaking. I'm Lise Wheel uh, for Long Crime. We have been listening to a fascinating, uh, we've got Mark Zuckerberg here in front of the Congress, special session of Congress for the last hour or so. Fascinating back and forth. A very, very well prepared CEO of Facebook going through a grilling uh, from the senators here on the Judiciary Committee and the Commerce Committee, a joint session. Um, he said at one point, referring to Russia, and I'm quoting uh, the CEO of Facebook, this is an arms race referring to Russia. And then I've got my good friend here, Ed Hayes, um, to, uh, to give some commentary. He also go, went in then in the back and forth with the, the senators talking about how much Facebook is really following us in our day-to-day -day, uh, doings, not just what we post on Facebook, what we have there, but how it's connected to us, uh, to our go going. Yeah, even, place. Well, he didn't quite say that. In, in fact, a couple of times he said, well, I've got to refer to my team. But you were getting a little nervous over there, Ed, I could tell. You know, you got to understand something. Anytime some big organization does something, you can go there and pay somebody to give you something. You can go someplace to get some of the American Express records. You can go some to the phone company and find out who, who's calling. If you're willing to pay enough, you can get a look at somebody's bank accounts. Any, there is somebody in Facebook who illegally is selling information. And if Russia needs information, and they want to get it from Facebook. All you got to do is find a guy for $50,000 that will go into that computer and give you whatever you want. That's it. Now, and as far as I had no idea they were cooperating with law enforcement. Well, he, he said that. Well, he said he's, he, they're cooperating with special counsel. In fact, he said even that he had to be careful in answering some of the senator's questions because he didn't want to go over the well, line he, and, and, and give over things that he was not supposed to. But they don't have a subpoena. To. Right, right. The best, my point is he said, I have to be careful here, senators, because we are, we are co uh, cooperating with special counsel, and I want to make sure that I don't give over anything confidential that we've already you know, discussed. Let me give with, you an example. It. Okay. All right. Somebody goes to Stormy Daniels and says, Stormy, you've been taking $5,000 a shot from a businessman in uh, Great Britain, and we think that you're probably doing something that you shouldn't do. Okay. okay? Now, Stormy... Either we release to the world, and you have a kid story, so you're not going to want the world to notice what you're doing with this businessman, or you're going to give us certain information that you haven't given us anybody else. You don't think that they can do that? 
And you don't think somebody someplace is sitting somewhere and do that? Somebody say, for instance, he's homosexual. That's what anybody to know. Works for the government. You go to the guy and say, listen, we hit a couple of places on your computer. We know that you're gay. And we want something from you or we're giving you up. You don't think they can do that? Of course they can do it. Anything Whoa. that somebody can do legally, the odds are that somebody can do it illegally. Well, and, and what Mark Zuckerberg said at a couple of points in time, he said, look, I've got to get to the, some of the questions that uh, the senators had. I have to do get back to you. Well, um, our team has to look at this. We're doing an audit of Cambridge Analytic because we don't know what they have or what the Russians have. That was a little bit chilling. He said, we don't know exactly what they have and what kind of uh, information that the that Cambridge Analytics still has. We have to, all the sorries aside, we have to conduct an audit. Before we go back to the live testimony, one other thing just to wrap this up. He did say unequivocally, it took a few, you know, pushes from the, the, the uh, senators, that, that he would work with the committee to come up with legislation to codify, to regulate both Facebook and the entire, basically the Internet, to, to regulate Facebook so that there would be more regulations on Facebook and other companies. I know you've got something to say. We'll go right back to you, Ed. So that there would be some regulations coming out of these hearings. Yes. You think these guys are a good fairy? You think that when they don't wake up in the morning and say, geez, if I make this decision, I go from being worth $100 million to $150 million or from $100 million to $25 million? Of course they're thinking about that. How does this guy make whatever the hell he has, $40 billion? He, when he makes that decision, right. it's not because he says, you know, okay, I want to help you. Part of the factor is, and who knows what well, they their got stock, on him? Their stock is going down. They're being sued by investors. So, um, yeah, yes, I mean, that, that's maybe part of it. But, but, to, but to be fair, right now what we're seeing is him right here in the hot seat. And he said under, you know, under oath here that, yes, he would work with the committee to come up with legislation to codify, to regulate, to add some laws. Add some laws. There are no laws really regulating Let, Facebook. Let's suppose, remember the scandals about Trump? and uh, 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 inappropriate sexual activity in Russia. How do we know that they didn't go into the Facebook book, uh, uh, information of, a, of everybody that frequents a bar in Moscow, every woman that's there, and come up with something and go to her and say, listen, I want to know what he did with you in that room. And then they go to him and say, hey, pal. Right? We don't know that. We don't. We sure don't. We sure don't. Well. On that note, on um, that cheery <laughs> note, uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, let's go back in um, to the uh, to the uh, joint hearing there, uh, the judiciary and the commerce uh, uh, sessions. And Mark Zuckerberg is on the hot seat. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Lise Wheel. Okay, the uh, Judiciary Committee and Commerce Committee are taking a five-minute break in the Mark Zuckerberg Facebook uh, testimony. Fascinating exchange there, wasn't it, Ed Hayes? There in the last few minutes there with Senator Cruz talking about uh, whether or not uh, the Facebook messaging was for good or for bad. That's what he had testified to, Zuckerberg had testified to earlier. He said that was Facebook's mission. And then the senator pushed back on that, saying, how can you decide what's good and bad? You're there in Silicon Valley, liberal, left-leaning. Right. Left um, and, and uh, you know, have you ever uh, fired or hired somebody based, and, or, you know, based on their deplorability? Even use that word. Actually, Zuckerberg used that word. Um, what did you make of that exchange there in the last couple of minutes? Really well, back and forth. Well, the essence of it is that you are you are unlikely to allow very conservative viewpoints on your platform on, right. because you consider them antisocial and therefore unacceptable. Right. right. And the natural predisposition of your staff and your investors and your board of directors is democratic and left. Right. Uh, You've never hired anyone and probably you may have fired people based on their political opinion. That was sort of what he was getting well, at. Well, he said, it, why did you fire one guy? Right. And then he said it had nothing to do with his politics. Right. I, you know, Ted Cruz is not my favorite person, so I'm not the right guy to ask about. But I, I think that it has some merit. I mean, you, it's like you may say that the New York Times is a great paper, 
but the New York Times is still a Manhattan paper with liberal tendencies. But I don't know how you not do that. I mean, well, but but, but Mark Zuckerberg actually took it took the seat back from uh, Ted Cruz in the sense, that, and he said, "You almost don't don't interrupt me. Let me answer this one. Let me answer it because." I, I, Mark Zuckerberg, I get it. I understand how you could see that. We are seated in, San, in the San Francisco area, in Silicon Valley, where everybody is left leaning. I, leaning. I can see how it would look that way to you, but we are a neutral, content based, you know, neutral platform. Um, we don't discriminate, you know, based on, you know, we don't take, discriminate on that. Um, what he has been saying, and it's been it's been very consistent. What he's been saying is where we do try to take content out of our platform is in terrorist. You know, which I think Senator Cruz he said you can agree that you we want to take that off. Hate crime, we want to take hate crime off of this off of the site. You know, things like that, and we don't try to take off this. What site. about if somebody wanted to go on his site and say, look, abortion is murder? All right now. Is, what is that? That's an opinion. If, right. if, if they say it like that, that's your First Amendment right to be able to say that. But nudity, he said, he specifically said nudity. He said things that are quote unquote bad. Um, that Zuckerberg's word, Zuckerberg's word. So that's a tough one because how do you define what is bad? I well, mean, certainly terrorism and hate speech we can all agree on. Trump's but then it, then it gets. Describe the people. Which, I hope I'm not interested. Go ahead. You no, know, I adore you. So you know, oh, okay, <laughs> that's that, great. <laughs> I hope. What about Trump said about those people in Charlottesville? Is right. that he was he was vaguely complimentary about them. Now. Does that give them more of a right to express their opinions on Facebook or not? I, you know, I don't. And then, and then, of course, what he also got at it, Zuckerberg got at, at not has so much in this hearing, but he has in other times. He said, you know, just to have the people monitoring everything that's being said on all of these sites, you know, all of the not just the eighty-seven thousand people that have been eighty-seven million people, excuse me, that have been affected by this um, a Cambridge Analytica s a scandal, but. Everybody, you know, monitoring all of every all the content is it's impossible to do on a daily basis. Um, what do you think about the other one of the other main topics that's been brought up in the last hour and a half, which is the you know what we all sign off on when we go into this when we sign off on the uh, the privacy we're sort of anti privacy I should say and senators have been holding up this sheath of paper you know it's almost do you know five pounders of what you sign off on what you accept in saying okay I'm going to have that Facebook I'm I'm going to sign up and and very down at the bottom is a box where you say accept if you want that service and they've been handing up these papers going this is what you sign off on and everyone agrees you don't read it and if you do you don't understand well, look, it the essence of politics is to take that pile of paper and some guy stands up and says this is what it means when it's clearly not what it means right and somebody else says well this is what it means you reduce it. That, listen, how do you think I'm wearing a custom-made suit? Because I stood up in front of a jury and said, I'm going to make this simple for you. Right? And it happens to be that making it simple favors my client. And right. if they believe me and not the other side, I go shopping. Right? That's it. Well, and I think that's what both, you know, both Mark Zuckerberg is saying and the senators are saying. Zuckerberg is saying, look, I agree with you. Senators, I want to make this easier as well. My team will help you, Senators, right. come up with codification, i.e. law, that will make this easier going forward. He doesn't have an evil heart, this guy. He's got a good heart. And, oh, it's absolutely. And he's possible. coming off, he's coming off oh, he's really brilliant. well. The only times where I think he's doing, in my, in my ear, what I'm hearing is a little bit of a dance, is where they pressed him. Um, the senator from Connecticut, um, uh, doc, uh, Senator Blumenthal, said, it really pressed him, he said, when he came to Cambridge Analytica, he said, he said, I think there's willful blindness, I'm quoting the senator from Connecticut, or uh, reckless, um, and, and he, sorry, willful blindness or recklessness, a violation of the consent decree. And he's talking specifically there about Cambridge Analytica. And there, I thought, Zuckerberg there was doing a little bit of a dance, and he came back and he said, well, Senator, let's not look at that so much specifically. <laughs> let's look at the broader picture. You, you and I as lawyers, we know whenever anybody criminal ever tries lawyers. to do that, criminal lawyers, what they're really kind of trying to do is evade that topic, that narrow topic, because they want to avoid your attention from that, 
get away from that. Let's look at the broader picture because well, I don't like that narrow topic that the senator from Connecticut was trying well, to hone in oh, on. But the other thing is this. To me, it seems like somebody here committed a crime, right? Either Cambridge Analytica, Kagan, assuming that he didn't have a deal with Cambridge Analytica before he got all right. this information. He probably doesn't want to be in a position where they say, oh, these guys committed a crime on your dollar, right? right. What are you doing to prosecute them? Or to, or to testify against him, then he's really in trouble. Because if that happens, then somebody's going to go really into their vis business yeah. and find out what he did or didn't do because they're going to try to discredit him so that nobody goes to jail. Oh, speaking of jail and discrediting and business, <laughs> we have so much going on here. Uh, we have Mark Zuckerberg in Washington, D.C., and we'll go back to that, and you can be watching that uh, live. We'll have that live streaming. But we don't want to forget about the Tex MacGyver case, which we've been following from the beginning. And now, as we've been uh, here, heard, uh, we just took a little a little steer to hear the Mark Zuckerberg. We're going to go back to Tex MacGyver. Remember, he's in Atlanta, Georgia. He's the he's the defense lawyer. There he is, or that's not him. But there's the trial. And we're going to go back now. The important thing here, okay, guys, to catch you up, the prosecution has rested. And the jury has come back, and now we have the defense putting on their case in the Tex MacGyver case. Let's go and listen. Spectre. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, it talks about, the letter talks about the calculation for Mr. MacGyver's minority shares, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the calculation of his minority shares, is that a, a calculation that you are familiar with? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, how is it that you are familiar with that calculation? Uh, that calculation was done. Hello, I'm Lise Wheel, and now we've gone to the Tex MacGyver case where the defense has started. We have the CEO of a company that Tex had a 10% interest in until January 2017. And the key there is to show, I believe, the defense is going to try to show here with this witness and others, that Tex MacGyver was not this herding puppy that didn't have any money. In fact, he was doing just fine. Why would he try to kill Diane? Why would he hatch this crazy plot? I mean, this cockamamie pop plot to kill his wife when he was doing just fine. And one of the reasons, one of the causes or the things that you can show to right now is the witness that's on the stand. But we've got to go back to Mark Zuckerberg, who is on the stand, his own stand right now and in D.C. in front of the Judiciary Committee and the Commerce Committee, a joint committee of senators and testifying. We're going to go back to that. Their break is over. So let's go back to Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook. Hi, I'm Lise Wheel. We're jumping out of the Mark Zuckerberg uh, hearing. You're going to be able to hear more of this. We're going to be able to keep going with this live streaming. Also, the Tex MacGyver case has finished up for the day. The jury has gone home. Fascinating end to the day of the Mark Zuckerberg or, or the Tex MacGyver case, where the first witness in the defense uh, got on the stand and talked about Tex MacGyver. Remember, he uh, is on the stand or is on on uh, is, is being uh, charged with the murder of his wife. And the first key witness for the defense said uh, that he was actually paid about seven hundred thousand dollars for his share, ten percent share in a company uh, that he was paid out in two thousand and seventeen. The end of two thousand seventeen, two hundred seven hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's got to make a big impression on the jury that he was maybe not a hurting, hurting guy there, that he had some money. Then why would he have the motive to kill his wife and kill her in such a kind of bizarre way with that firearm? We'll be picking up with more of the defense on the Tex MacGyver case in Atlanta tomorrow. Uh, right now, the uh, the attorneys are having some conversations with the with the judge, uh, but the jury has gone home in that case. So we'll have more of that tomorrow. We'll have still continuing with Mark Zuckerberg. Just wanted to bring in Ed Hazier for a minute before we wrap, but key, key to me here at Hayes, there was a uh, back and forth with, uh, with Mark Zuckerberg about control, control of your, uh, what you give to Facebook, the, the information that you give up to Facebook. Control was key. Those are Mark Zuckerberg's words in 2011. This is what he wrote and said in 2011 that the senator pushed back and said, you use, use those re repeatedly, those words in 2011. You said uh, that, that you use those words and 
you use them, uh, uh, she said, you use them really to use uh, to kind of just make sure that uh, Facebook users are feeling good. Are, should Facebook users feel good? Are they feeling safe or are they actually safe? Feeling safe or actually safe? That was key to me. That was really sort of underlying all of this hearing that we've the first day of the fee of hearing here no, that we've safe. had. Are they feeling safe or are we actually safe in using Facebook? Somebody just stole 87 million people's uh, uh, personal information. You're not safe. They grabbed the information for 87 million people. How safe can you be? That's, that's by the way, the ones that they know they grabbed. As I've said a number of times during this show, if you go in and give somebody money or something else, you have to get your hands on a lot of stuff. That, and Cambridge Analytica, uh, look, uh, if you believe the, uh, the, the press, uh, the Russians were doing something with Trump. God knows who's been doing something with uh, Facebook. Well, it's absolutely fascinating to me. And I'm not, I'm using words from Mark Zuckerberg from 2011 when he said control was key, that is IER control. And uh, it was really a pushback from the senators today saying, hey, you've used those words. Are you sort of appeasing us, Facebook users? Are we actually, are, we, are you using those words to make us feel safe? Are we actually safe in using Facebook? So uh, tune in for more of Mark Zuckerberg. We'll be live streaming and tune in tomorrow for more of the Tex MacGyver case where the defense is in full motion. They started off really pretty strong here with their first witness. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more live streaming. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow on Law and Crime.